Yes, hi, beloved. Such an honor to be on this journey together where we plan and uh, we execute growth strategies, okay? We want to be the best versions of ourselves, but again, we want to be more than the best versions of ourselves. We want to live life in accordance to God's plan or in alignment with God's plan and what he has predestined for us. For me, that beats everything that before our paths were woven together, in the sacred places that he predestined a future that is good that means that between where we are and where we want to go where we long to go where we desire to go there are certain things that we must learn along the journey because you want to get to a place where you are totally happy you look at things it doesn't mean that you're not going through trials it doesn't mean that you're not going to, through tribulations it doesn't mean that you're not going through loss or disappointments or frustrations but there are certain truths that you know because it's only the truth that you know that actually sets you free so today we're going to share um a topic that I really, um, I deem quite hard for so many of us to actually admit or even talk about, but we all get misunderstood in different areas of life. And I will tell you that most of the people that do amazing things or that are out there sold out to help people, because remember, my core calling is with the people helpers. If you are out there helping other people, transforming their lives, pouring into them, helping them, assisting them, guiding them, giving them solutions. You are my tribe. If you are the kind that has a calling, you know, even if you've not yet found your purpose, but you feel there is more to life than just holding a job, there is more to life than just living, existing, there is more to life. You are my tribe. And so I call you out to come and join me. Today we talk about being misunderstood and how to manage that situation. Because so many people have given me these questions and so many leaders. Because because, I mean, in companies, in churches, um, the coaches that I mentor, the coaches that I've seen out there. By the way, it doesn't have to be just the coaches. I have seen media personalities being misunderstood. I have seen, so you realize that at every level of operation, there is a chance to be misunderstood. And so if you do not learn to manage, if you don't have the truth that can set you free from being misunderstood, then you are going to be agitated, you're going to be frustrated, you're going to be, you know, disappointed in people. You are going to, to back away from people, the same people that you would have helped, or you will not continue helping other people because the people that you formerly helped actually misunderstood you and misunderstood your motives because it's the motives that are usually um, mis misunderstood. All right. So the question here, here is, what do you do about it? when you have been misunderstood. I know some of you will tell me, oh, the first thing I explain, because the urge to explain is usually, you know, more, it's usually big in our lives. We usually feel like, you know what, they should understand what exactly I was trying to mean. They should understand what exactly I was trying to do. And then there are people that feel like, you know what, I lack the words. I don't, I don't know what to say. So they just, you know, cower back and they just crawl back in the, into their shells. They've been misunderstood to that means they're going to drop every operation drop every project or they are going to like they are going to be hurt and they're going to be speechless and paralyzed and whatever they were planning to do or they were doing is actually not going to be done and the Bible says that everything you find to do, do it with all your might. That means that you have to have a certain level of clarity, a certain level of understanding yourself and the truth, operating in truth, knowing that you know what, I am not doing this for anyone. I am doing this for me and I am putting all my energy. I am giving it my whole and I am creating a platform for God to be able to bless me and for God to be able to do that. But realize there is a level of truth. There is a level of sobriety that we must be operating in because most times when we become disappointed when when when, uh, when we are misunderstood we tend to to edit ourselves we tend not to give our full effort. We tend to walk on eggshells. We tend to want to read people's minds about how, how they interpret our motives and our actions instead of us giving it our whole. And because I told you, there's a time we talked about um, the, the secret, which is not really a secret, to um, 
to, to success. And it was like so obvious. Some of these things, these are biblical principles that whatever you find to do, do with all your might. Because so many of us, twist us, it are like we are so lenient with ourselves. We don't give in our whole. And then we expect big results. And yet we are putting in haphazard efforts. So you realize that one of the things that causes people to give in haphazard efforts sometimes is being misunderstood because they were doing everything in their power. Their motives were misunderstood. And now they're like, you know what? Why? Like, why? Why? Okay? I, in Lugard, I think they put it out it's all right. Like, unfortunately, like what? You know, I have done good and the good has been misunderstood. And now I, I really don't think I should give it my whole anymore. Please wait before you even decide to say that you are crawling back into your shell. You're giving up on people. There are certain truths that you must know. And those are the truths that we are going to share today. But before we share those truths, I will just share something that I read uh, that actually triggered this conversation for me because I have been sensing them be, people being misunderstood. People have asked me the questions. Leaders have asked me the questions. CEOs have asked me the questions. Executive managers have asked me the same questions whenever I go out to do these um, speaking engagements. And so I felt we should be able to touch on that. That is First Thessalonians 2.3. And it says that um, we had previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philip. Uh, but as you know, okay, but with the help of God, we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. Number three, for the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. So in my heart of hearts, I was like, okay, this is Paul. Paul is trying, like he's doing good work, okay? He's doing good work. He's out there trying to preach the gospel. He is wholeheartedly invested in this. But how dare he go to the Thessalonians, the ones that he had already helped, he had added value to them. He had held their hands. He had gotten them to some point. And now all of a sudden, he has to explain his motives because by the time you explain your motives, it's because you have been misunderstood. And it's because you have read in between the lines. It's because you have seen how people are looking at you. It's because you have seen how they are talking to you. It's because you have seen how they are questioning your motives and your tricks. They feel like you want to trick them into something they want to. And yet for him, he felt like, I am preaching the, 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 the message of the cross. I'm preaching the gospel. I am, I, am, I, am here. I have helped you before. I am here to help you again. Have you ever tried to help someone? Someone, oh, you, you have already added value to that person, but they are busy putting on glasses and uh, lenses and um, what do we call filters and busy filtering what it is and why you are doing the things that you are doing. And so they are questioning your motives. So that means they have misunderstood the reason as to why you are doing what you are doing, even when you are adding value to them even when you are actually helping them. Because we would not call it misunderstood if you were not um, in direct contact or, uh, contact or even helping them. It's until you're trying to help and that help is being misunderstood or the motive for that help is being misunderstood. That is why we call it actually being misunderstood. Because you'd expect that they would understand that you're actually helping them. But all of a sudden, you're reading faces and eyes that are dotting around the room. It's, they are questioning. There's a time, I think I was talking to... Um, we were in the accelerated mentorship. We usually have Tuesday uh, sessions on Zoom. And um, this is for, uh, for everyone, even those in diaspora. And so um, I was telling them about some of the... Um, um, what, what will I call them? Some of the things that we must be able to do as people help us is being present. Like being serious, like present in the moment. While someone comes to you for help, you should never just be present in the body, but your mind is everywhere else. Because in order to help them, you must understand the full extent of the, of the magnitude of the problem that they're going through. And sometimes even the process, whether they really understand what you, the process that you have taken and the kind of help that you are offering. And this can only be understood when you pay attention 
to their eyes, how they breathe, their aha moments, how are their eyes dilated. So most of the times as people help us, when you look at someone and you read in be between the lines and you're like, uh oh, I have been mis understood how do you do that i want us to be able to share some truths okay that if you really understand them you are going to manage that scenario of being misunderstood that you're not going to totally be at the, uh, defending yourself all the time explaining yourself all the time if you know the truth the truth sets you free and that is the truth that we want to be able to know today all right uh some people that have misunderstood you are people that are familiar with your ministry familiar with the kind of work that you do familiar the people that you have assisted some people you have opened doors for some people you have you know you you you, you have gotten out of certain situations and so uh, when the Luganda says that you, so you realize that some people are just ungrateful and they misunderstand based on ungratefulness but some people just utterly just misunderstand, choose to misunderstand the motives or the reasons as to why you're doing that and I'm not saying this that you will be entitled because we are not entitled even when we are people helpers we have the level, the level of people helping, we are not supposed to be entitled to being understood all the time we're not supposed to be entitled to for our help to be understood the thing is we are not doing this for anyone we are actually sowing seeds and we are doing this for God even when we are trying to help human beings and people because if you're seeking reward from people that means you have not understood your assignment your assignment is to help Okay, your assignment is to hold their hands. Your assignment is to be able to open doors for them, to give them clarity. Your assignment is to be able to, you know, to encourage them. Now, you are not supposed to expect reward and results from the same people that you're helping because then that will make you actually entitled. You're not supposed to be entitled. Okay, so it is very possible to make great contributions to the lives of people and they will still be confused about your motives. It is very possible. These statements are supposed to help you, get you out of the jail of over-explaining, of, um, of, of even being entitled to being understood. They are supposed to release you so that you can serve. They are supposed to release you so that you can help. They are supposed to release you that, by the way, you're not the only one that is being misunderstood. So many people have been misunderstood. You know, as parents, you have been misunderstood. As Guardians, you have been misunderstood. As, as, in, as bosses, you have been misunderstood. As leaders, you have been misunderstood. Okay? And you have to have an elevated position sometimes uh, actually to be misunderstood. Some people, yes, you can misunderstand your subordinate. But when you misunderstand your subordinate, you realize that as a leader, you'll leave and give them a chance. If you're really a good leader, you'll give them a chance to explain. And you will be understanding enough to know and to understand, to read between the lines, to understand their motives, that maybe their motives were actually right. Okay? So, you can do all the contributions that you want to do, but that does not make you immune to being misunderstood. All right? Especially when it comes to the value that you have added unto them. And then you have to understand that you can't avoid being misunderstood. Just like I've said, no one is immune. When you know that truth, when, the misunder when, when you're be being misunderstood, you're not going to say, but why me? Who do you want to be misunderstood? But, I mean, as uh, millions of people are being misunderstood out there, so you can't avoid it, okay? And even if you do something or you, do, you, or you don't, okay, I just want us to, 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 to look at this, that most of the times when you're being misunderstood, you have actually gone ahead and done something uh, and you really thought you were doing something good, okay? But even if you don't do it, chances are that is also going to be interpreted and it's going to be misunderstood. So you realize that there is nothing you can do to avoid being misunderstood. Whether you do or you don't do. I think it's, um, there's a time I was talking to my, to, my, to my husband and I was telling him that, you know what, whether, whether I do or I don't, like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm doomed. Like th there, is, there, is no, there is no option. 
okay? They, there is no option. There is no this or this, okay? It's actually both of them work hand in hand because this person is totally determined to misunderstand you. And so, even if you over-explain or you don't explain, you don't explain, that is uh, what? Pride. You explain, you are wasting time. And so I was like, okay, I looked at this boy that I was actually uh, helping that was, was being misunderstood. I call him a boy because he's young, but he's a man and he was being misunderstood. And so I was telling him that, you know what, whatever you do, whether you do or you don't do. And so for me, it was so annoying that I had to go back to Tim and, and tell him that, you know what, some people just make other people's lives so hard. I wish this boy just, under, I wish this man or young adult just understands that, by the way, it's a trick either way. They are going to be misunderstood. Whether they over explain or they don't explain, they are going to be misunderstood. And sometimes to tell such a person that, you know what, find peace, even when you're misunderstood. Find peace, okay? Withdraw. Let them decide what the next course of action is going to be. Like, it's very hard to be in such a pending status or in such a pending state. Why? Because you think, I was doing good. I have done good. I actually have, I can see that I have done good. Other people are seeing that I have done good. Why is, why is it that this person cannot see that you have done good? That means in their mind, they are already determined whether you do good or you don't good, it is all Nothing, okay? It's going to be misunderstood or it's going to, it's bound to be misunderstood, all right? And then one thing that uh, really, really has helped me on this journey because as a leader, some of these things that I'm telling you are things that I've gone through at, at the deepest level, at the most disappointing level, at the most, you know, um, unexpected level. But one thing that has actually helped me is not to manage that the, the 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 being misunderstood but to manage myself while i am being misunderstood i don't know whether you really understand okay not to manage the being misunderstood because chances are i'm not going to do anything about it i can't convince you i don't have any other vocabulary i don't have and i i i even don't have the time like added to all those things in the mixture, I don't even have the time. Or even if it's not the time, but even the guts to just go and explain myself after doing good, after adding value. And now I have to explain myself. So you see, this is what Paul was going through in Thessalonians. Okay. He was telling them that I'm not trying to trick you. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, 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 uh, to twist you. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm just bringing the gospel. Like, that is all I am doing, okay? I am just adding value. That is all I am doing. And you can decide whether you want the value or you don't want the value. But you standing in the place of judgment and misunderstanding and then expecting me to explain, okay, that is rude, very rude. So that means if I understand the truth of the matter, that I don't have to manage being misunderstood, but I have to manage myself, then that is going to take away a lot. Like That is going to bring the power back in my hands. And let me tell you, that's going to give me happiness. And let me tell you, I have worked in scenarios where I have been misunderstood by the people that I'm trying to help. And I have gotten peace. I have laughed through that storm of being misunderstood. Why? I managed me. I did not manage the being misunderstood. Okay, number one, let's go. You can't expect people to respect sacrifices they didn't see or feel. Every time I have been misunderstood, I have done certain things, I have sacrificed certain things, I have, you know, I have done certain things, I've gone out of my way to do certain things, but the other people didn't notice or didn't see the sacrifice or didn't feel the sacrifice, so, it's possible that I should not even expect them to understand. I should not. They have seen the result, but they have not seen the behind the curtain. Okay? The behind the curtain explains everything. I'll give you an example. Just what I am doing right now. You'll say, ah, she, I mean, we just, 
We, we, we watched it and, you know, and, and it was helpful. But you don't know the kind of sacrifices that today, early in the morning, at 4 a.m., while I woke up to help to, to prepare my children to go to school, when they were out of the house at 5, at, at 5 a.m., I sat down and did my devotions. I read, my, I, I, I read the scriptures. I internalized. I understood. And I was like, you know what? I need to be able to prepare this because in as much as I've been misunderstood while I'm trying to help people, so many people have been misunderstood while they're trying to help. So now, how do I have this conversation? And so I felt the need to share the truths that have set me free in the world of being misunderstood that right now you can misunderstand me all you want. And guess what? I'll be sipping on my cup of coffee. I'll be having the fun of my life. I will, as in, I will look at you and in my heart I was like, God, help them, you know, <laughs> discover <laughs> what issues they are fighting with. As for me and my heart, we are very clear on the value that we are adding. We are very clear on the, on, on the help that we are giving, the unconditional help that we are giving. As for me and my heart, we are very clear about our mission and who we have to help. And as for me and my heart, we are not entitled to any gratitude. No, we are not helping that we will be that, that we will be respected. We are not helping that we will be appreciated. We are helping because it is our mandate, our assignment, and what we have been called to do. And let me tell you, when you get to that level, oh my goodness. You, there is a thriving, there is a laughter that even comes from your belly. There is, as in, you don't even pay attention to certain things. You, you start helping and going, helping and going. You do not linger in a place to be appreciated or for hands to be clapped for you or for people to appreciate you for the rest of their lives. Mm -mm. No, no. Recently, actually, someone um, did, um, they, 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 were, they were appreciating uh, something that I had done I will tell you this, uh, something that I had done that is 2008, 2009, no, 2010. Just imagine, 2000. That is more than 14 years ago. 14 years ago. And the appreciation came after 14 years, ago, uh, 14 years after I had done what I had done wholeheartedly helped, assisted, you know, being there for someone. And so, like... In those years, there are times I questioned, I was like, did they see the value? Did they see what, what, what I did? Because again, if anything, they actually misunderstood my sacrifice. They misunderstood my wholeheartedness. They misunderstood what I did. And so I was like, did they even see? Did they even feel? And then when I got delivered from, from upload, <laughs> yeah, that, that was deliverance, by the way. And that is a journey of a leader. You know, at some point, you get to a point and you're like, this is not a journey where I, I'm seeking for people to applaud me. No, this is a journey that I have chosen to move. And so I, I forgot about it. I buried it 14 years later. 14 years later, this person amidst other people, in front of other people, is appreciating and is digging up the details that I'd even forgotten and the things that I lived, the experiences that I went through, the sacrifices that I went through. And they're talking about them and in my heart I'm like, wait a minute. So they saw, they felt, they knew, they recognized, okay? And... Like, for me, and that was the end of it all. Like, for me, it was not even a, a big thing. I was like, okay. Seems like they actually noticed. Seems like they actually saw it. So, you can't expect, when you understand that, when I understood that, it delivered my mind. You can't expect people to respect sacrifices that they didn't see or that they didn't feel. You are the one that felt it. You are the one that saw it. You are the one that went through it. You are the one that know how, how much valuable what you gave or what you did was. For them, they didn't see. Okay? So, some people see results and not the work. And so, they're going to misunderstand. Because all they see is 
the result, not the work, not the input, not the sacrifice, not everything that you have done, okay? And they, 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 have, they, they have expectations, okay? And sometimes uh, their expectations are actually not, um, not real, not true, okay? So now, here you are putting in a lot of effort and the result is like, but only this? <laughs> the result is that only this? Like, but you were And so, like, you don't know how many sleepless nights. You don't know how many. So, you realize that the sacrifice, they will never know the sacrifice and the kind of work that you're actually putting into that. So, I want your mind to be at rest as a leader, as a people helper, as a person that has helped, as a parent, as a big brother, as a big sister, as a sibling, whatever it is, your level, even if you are subordinate, or you're an employee, whatever, as in, they are not going to understand. They can, just to imagine, you, you've been asked to, to, to do a report as a subordinate, as an employee, and you have put in nights, you have, you know, you have researched, you have, you know, consulted, you have done, as in for you, you feel like I have put in everything in this report, and then only to give it to your supervisor or give it to your manager, and the best they can do is, like, what, 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 what is this? Like, what is this? That is misunderstanding of the value. Okay, and sometimes you really want to explain how valuable this is. And, but they are bent on just misunderstanding. So you realize that it becomes so, so hard. But the moment you understand some of these things that we have talked about, you will rest and know that indeed they didn't understand. They didn't see the sacrifice. They don't understand the sacrifice. They have just seen just the result. And I mean, they might never, 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 never understand, okay? And then the other thing that has just dawned on me, until someone is able to put on your shoes and walk your journey, they will never understand the kind of sacrifices and what you have had to go through in order to get to where you are or do the things that you have done. Just imagine. Do you know that it takes some people to become leaders themselves for them to understand? There's someone else, else I told recently, um, and I, I, I told them, they were telling me so many things that, you know, they were not adding up. And so in my heart of hearts, I was like, yeah, they don't have that point of view that I have. Uh, they don't have the, um, the, 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 ad, the advantage to see from the angle that I'm seeing things. And so I told this person that, you know what, one day you will become an employer. One day you will become a leader or an owner of an organization. But up until then, you will not understand my decisions. You will not understand my operations. Why? Because you're seeing things from an angle of an employee. You're seeing things from an angle of a different angle from the vantage angle that I am seated at. Like I am seeing so many things. I'm seeing so many players. I'm seeing so I am not just seeing things through a certain constricted lens. Okay. But one day, you will become an employer. And I remember this person telling me that, yeah, I know, I know, I, I have that calling. I feel like I'm going to do big things. And I, I told them that but I have, I'm praying for you. But when you get to that time, look for me. Let's have a cup of coffee and tell me. The kind of discussion that we are having right now, you will have another point of view. You will have another angle to it. Why? Because at this time, you cannot see the sacrifices. At this time, you cannot see, you cannot feel the sacrifices. All you see is the result. And maybe the result is not to your test. And it's never going to be to your test. Why? Because we have so many other decisions to make concerning the same decision. Okay? So, until they move, until... Until, you know, when someone says, ah, but for me, when I become the leader, when I become the manager, when I become this, you will see, I will do things differently. Ah, 
they are seeing it from a different angle. Oh, when I become a parent, I will do things differently. Oh, when I become when I get money, <laughs> I will do things differently. So do you see? They are seeing it from a different angle. But until they put on your shoes and they move your journey, they will never understand the sacrifices because all they are seeing right now is the result. The result. So understanding that is going to give you peace of mind. Number two, you can only make sure your motives are pure because that is what you have control about. You can't control whether people will question your motives. You can only make sure that your motives, you can only make sure that the reason as to why you're doing whatever you are doing, that just like I said, that many of you, you are doing it um, out of the pureness of your hearts, out of the kindness of your hearts. Many of you are doing things because, um, uh, b b because you're, you're planting seeds. I've told people the reason as to why I do so many things, sometimes I even give pro bono services, and someone will be like, but why did you do this? In my heart of hearts, I know I'm, I'm sowing seeds for my children. And sometimes I've looked at some of the people that I've helped, and I'm like, one day, one time, there are people that have called me at the verge of suicide. There are people that have called me, like, give, throwing in a towel on their lives. There are people that have called me, and sometimes I'm like, one day, one time, my children will meet a stranger. They will get a number from, in, from internet. They will get a number from social media, and they will call that stranger. And maybe that stranger is going to stand with my child. Why? because I sowed seeds without expecting any form of reward. Because when you give a pro bono service or when you help someone without even expectation of, of money, like there's nothing to expect from them. You're like, you know what, let me pick this call. You hear the voice and it's someone that, and I don't know, my heart goes out so much to the youths or, and, and to, 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 the, to the women. And by the way, sometimes even the men, especially when they're suffering and a man calls you while they're crying. My goodness, I will not even tell you how much I charge for a session. No. I'll be like, what's happening? And I will give you 30 minutes of my time, an hour of my time. Do you know how much? I, uh, if I'm to charge an hour, how much that would be? But in this case, I'm not looking at the money. In this case, I'm looking at a man that is 45 years old, that is calling me wailing like a baby. And I'm like, what's happening? And they narrate their story. And we are able to get to a solution or options of what they can be able to do. And you can feel them breathing and sighing in relief. And they're like, you don't know what you have done for me. And I'm like, maybe one day my brother, maybe my brother is not going to call me, but he's going to call a stranger in a time of need, and that stranger is going to help them. So you see, you can only control the pureness of your heart, but you cannot control as to whether people choose to criticize or to pick on your motives or to question your motives. Okay, because people always feel like it's, an, it's a means to an end. Sometimes there's no means to an end. Sometimes it's as it is that, yes, I have opened this door for you. That's it. There is no motive behind it. I have uh, helped you through this. There is no motive behind it. Okay? You know, some people, well, have you ever given someone money and all of a sudden, they're like, but they are showing off because they have a lot of money. They were in need. And you give them money. And now all of a sudden, because you give them money, you are showing off. So you see, you can only control the pureness of your heart that you gave from the purest of intentions. That you saw this person in need and you sought to help them. Whether they question the help that you gave them, that is on them. That is not on you. Now, that should free your heart. That if you are being misunderstood, just imagine you give someone a lift and all of a sudden, ah, they just wanted to show off. Okay. Okay. You, you sat down and you encouraged someone or you counseled someone and they're like, 
they just wanted to prove the point that they know a lot more than all that maybe they are wiser or they are above. And you know, a person that is misunderstanding, uh, do you know that they have character traits? Most people that choose to misunderstand, they will never misunderstand in silence. They will seek to want others to misunderstand you. My goodness. They, that, that's, that, that's what will, will happen. Because if they were to die with what they were thinking, chances are it would never have brought any havoc or it would never have hurt you. Anyway, the reason as to why it hurts you is that they do not just keep quiet with it. They do not just look at it and say, oh, she's just showing off. No. She will get another person or he will get another person to tell. Can you imagine this person was doing this, but this was the motive the whole time. Now you are the one all of a sudden that knows the motive that you did discuss with the person that actually did whatever act that they did to help. But now you know better because you are wiser. And so just like we say that misery looks, um, um, uh, looks for company. Okay. So even misunderstanding, just like gossip loves company. Just like misery loves, loves company. Even misunderstanding loves company. You can never misunderstand in isolation. No. Every person that chooses to misunderstand chooses to actually gossip about it or to even recruit more people to misunderstand. There's um, a, a story that I've usually uh, given. Um, there's um, a time... Um, a person just came into the, the, the workplace, okay, um, into our workplace. And so all of a sudden, someone else, you know, <laughs> sought to, uh, to orient them, felt the need to orient them. So this person went and sat them. And knowing that person is orienting you with bad things, you know, there is a way they will pull you aside. They will make you their friend. They will, they will, want, you, they will want you to see like they have your back. Eh? They're like, you come, you come, I tell you. I have data on everyone in this company. I have data on everyone in this company. But let's start with so and so. So I was the, the starter. <laughs> I was the starter of this conversation, of this kind of gossip. So the person sits uh, that person down. I was like, you know, you have to be very, very careful about her. You have to do this. And you have to, you know, she's like this and she's like that and she's like that. You know, like said a lot of things. Now, I didn't even bother to ask what things were spoken. I didn't bother because I know the motives of my heart. Okay, I understand the motives of my heart. So this is what happens. Fast forward. After five years of working with this person, okay, one day, it was even, um, it was a baby shower. It was my baby shower for my firstborn. This person stands up and is like, I have, it was her turn to speak because other people had spoken. It's like, you don't know what you have done in my life. I have admired you for so long. I have, but on top of my admiration, when I had just walked into the company, when I just come, when you had just given me the job, someone sat me down and told me all the bad things about you and I believed them. And for the past five years, I have just been brushing in corridors with you, just walking and running away from you and until I sat down and I was like, but no one else knows all these bad things about this lady. And I did not take time to give her the benefit of doubt to see these things or witness these things firsthand. But I just believed someone that had a bias, someone that had formulated their own interpretation of her motives, of why, of her operation, and what, how she was doing the things that she was doing. And, and she was like, I have missed five years of coming close to you, of being helped by you. Because even the help that I have received from you, I have received it from YouTube, from your Facebook page, from from, as in, I have received it when I see you on speaking engagements. And so, for the five years, I have feared to come close to you because I was told you are a terrible person. Just imagine. Just imagine. And this person was like, I am so sorry. I have actually self-sabotaged. 
if I had come closer to you with the kind of help that you are, you have helped me make so many decisions, even just by reading your content and watching your content and watching you speak, how much more would it have been if I had come close to you and worked in close proximity? That means you would have groomed me into a better person. But this person missed five years. Five years. As in, for that, they felt they missed five years. Why? Because they, the person that oriented them, okay, just chose to make everyone around her misunderstand. Just like I said, misery loves company. Gossip loves company. Sorrow loves company. Even misunderstanding loves company. No one will ever misunderstand you in isolation. No. They will always seek to spread it out so that they can have 10, 20, 30, 100 people that look at you through the same lenses, through the same glasses. <laughs> that they, as in they have put on the Archie filter and all of a sudden they are getting that filter. And while I was speaking about the filter, I remembered Incredible. I don't know if you guys have watched Incredible. Um, uh, the part, the, the, especially the part where this, um, the sister to this gentleman that uh, owned these, um, you know, malt um, uh, uh, companies uh, made glasses, okay? And these glasses, whenever they put them on the superheroes, the superheroes will be controlled by a certain machine somewhere so the superheroes would actually misbehave. Because the brother, what the brother wanted was, the superheroes are so helpful. They're going to help us because they can run quickly. They can be able to help us with all the crimes around time, town if we can be able to help them. And the sister is against the superheroes. So the sister invents her glasses that can, that can be remotely controlled on a certain computer so that when a superhero puts on this, these glasses, the superhero can actually misbehave. So you realize that most of these, when, whenever they put on the glasses, they became something else. Now, I was talking about the glasses and the filter. Okay, because most of the times when you, if you wanted to bring them back to their senses, the superheroes, what you had to do was to take away the glasses. When you take away the glasses, then they, they're like, okay, I'm supposed to be saving the world. I'm not supposed to be killing. Okay, so most of the times when people wear these glasses, now just imagine the, the scenario of the person that I told you, the one that was... Um, indoctrinated or the, the, the one that was oriented in a new workplace, okay? It's like they got glasses and they put them on her. And those glasses had a tint or those glasses uh, had a filter or those glasses. So they could only see what they have been told to see. That means they have not used their brain. And that means that by the time someone orients you, it's like... They are thinking you're so dense and you're so stupid that you cannot make your own judgment. Just imagine if someone ever brings you gossip and you believe that gossip, the way that it has been passed on to you, that means that person has actually deemed you stupid and foolish that you cannot make your own judgment. Because if they thought you are wise and you are, you, 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 you know, you can make your own judgment, they would have left you to see the scenario yourself so that you can make your own conclusions, okay, instead of them spreading the gossip. Now, a person that is upright, a person that has better motives, when someone brings you the gossip, you say, you know what, until I see it for myself, I cannot because I don't know how you look at things from which lenses. So maybe that is who she is to you. But I have to see firsthand who she is, okay, so that I can make my own conclusion. Now, that is a wise person. But wise people are so few, very few, okay? We have been... Um, inclined and nurtured and brought up to believe anything that we are being given. So even when someone is poisoning you, you just take the poison. Okay? Can we be wise enough? Like the, the, like the Bible says, cunning. Okay? So that when someone misunderstands someone, you do not seek to take the same template and apply it. You're like, wait a minute. 
It's possible you saw it differently at a different angle at a different time, but allow me see it for myself so that I can deduce or make a conclusion out of, ab about it. Now, that is a wise person. But just like I said, wise people are very, very few. Most people go with the bandwagon. What? You said he is bad? Yeah, he is bad. You said we hate him? Yes, let's hate him. You said that leader is uh, controversial and misleading? Yeah, he's controversial and misleading. Why can't we use our brains? Why? When someone tells you that you are siblings and someone tells you, but ah, uh, he is, he's, he's just, sh just showing off all because maybe he's, he's well-to-do or maybe he has some money, he's just showing off. Why do you take the explanation of your sibling against another sibling? Don't you have eyes? Don't you have a brain? Don't you have a life? Can't you get close enough to see for yourself and make the same conclusion? Okay, come back and tell your other sibling that, yeah, finally what you said was true. But that means that person will respect you for the rest of their lives because they're like, you know what? They sought to know the truth. They just didn't take the bandwagon information. Okay? So, number two, we said, you can only make sure that your motives are pure. You can't control whether they question your motives. People have glasses, and the glasses are blood. They are tinted, they are filtered, and they see whatever they want to see. But when they see, just like I've told you, they don't keep quiet. They go and tell another person. And tell another person, and tell another person person okay so you're not going to just be under misunderstood by one person you're going to be misunderstood by several people it's going to be a chain of reaction okay and some people by the way at um let me also say this some people will choose to believe the same gospel or another person that misunderstood you why because they are also in a powerless situation just look at this. Your supervisor misunderstands you. Or does not misunderstand you, but they create a story, okay, that is totally distorted. When they create a story that is totally distorted, maybe they take it to, your, to a manager. And maybe from a manager, they take it as in their other leaders, maybe like three leaders in between, before even the top leaders, but maybe there are three leaders in between. And those leaders are like, you know what? We do not want to bring problems. We do not want to bring so many eyes to this. So we will keep quiet and we will just go with what is, with the report that we have been given, okay? We will just go with that because if we start opening more files and digging deeper, chances are we will cause problems on ourselves. Because why? Because we are also employed. Because we are also waiting for the check at the end of the month. So we do not want to jeopardize this, our, our checks or our employment, you know. So, and we are not the last people to make these decisions. So we are just going to keep quiet with the whole thing. So someone misunderstands you. And other people choose to sit on the misunderstanding and they don't do anything about it. Why? Because they are powerless. And you can't blame them. You can't. You can't blame them. It's like when a person um, mis misunderstands and they are, the, they, they are being helped uh, or someone you come and tell someone that, oh, you know, so-and-so did this and even if it's, by the way, wrong, and um, all of a sudden, the other person cannot take any action. Why? Because they are still receiving help from the, other, from the other person. So you see, like nothing is going to be done. So get used to it. Okay? So they have glasses. The glasses are blood. The glasses are tinted and they're filtered. And there is nothing you're going to do, to do about it. You know your intentions, but you can't control how they read into this, you can't control how they choose to question your motives. Remember Joshua and the people that went to spy the land when they came back and gave them, and gave them the news? 
you know, the biased news of, you know, they have six fingers. They, yeah, indeed, they had them, okay? But remember, Joshua had, had, had a totally different, you know, a, a point of view. This is a promised land. Someone, prom God promised. God, the maker of heaven and earth. You know, he has not brought us this far to abandon us. And so we can fight and we can possess the land okay so you realize that sometimes people are uh, have just like we were we we're explaining the scenario of glasses they see things differently and they will come and spread the fear and guess what the fear is so easy to spread than faith okay the fear everyone will be like we didn't come here to die from 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 the desert uh we had onions and we had watermelons in uh, in egypt so why did we come we had uh graves in egypt why did we come into the wilderness to actually die in the wilderness why because their hearts have been griefed by fear and the fear where has the fear come from from people that have lenses and they have filters and they are seeing things differently from how god wants them to be okay so uh, his intention as a leader as Moses is I'm taking you to the promised land and he's being misunderstood is like you want us to die in the wilderness okay uh, but what's your problem exactly what is your problem by the time just look at Moses and how he came and actually broke the commandments he because he was he was misunderstood okay he goes up to commute, to, to commute with God, you know, to be intimate with God and for God to put all these things on his heart. And he comes back and he finds them worshipping calves. You know, they made a calf and they started worshipping it. And so he comes and his heart is broken and he ends up breaking the commandments. Okay, why? Because, I mean, they misunderstood him. They were like, you know what, we should make our own God. You know, his intentions, we, we don't know. We don't know his motives. It's possible he even just brought us so that we can die here in the wilderness. And they forgot. They forgot that God saved them. That God saved their first bones, you know, by putting blood on their, on the, on their doorposts and the angel of death passing by. That God had, they forgot that the chariots that actually perished in the Red Sea, that it, the Red Sea parted for them. As in, people easily forget Okay, and that is how. Let's talk about the last one. Being misunderstood doesn't mean that you don't have value. It just means that they don't see the value. When I knew that, oh, I rested. Okay, you misunderstanding me does not mean that I don't have value. It just means that you're not seeing the value. Okay, it just means that your vision is impaired. <laughs> your vision is, is, is not right. Okay, so I'm not going to argue with that. No, because I'm, I'm, I'm never going to rectify your vision. I can scream on the mountaintop. I can cut myself into pieces. I can do, and you will still choose to see me the way you want to see me. So can I resign to the fact that what I'm doing is valuable? I have value and other people are gaining from that value and you're not going to stop me from adding value to other people. Because this is what happens. The moment we are misunderstood, what the intention of the devil in us being misunderstood as leaders, as people helpers, is that you will even stop helping. So you realize how you shut yourself down all of a sudden and you're like, but people are unappreciative. You know, people are very ungrateful. You know, how, how can someone question my motives? And yet I was just giving value. I was just, I was just offering. I was just, I was just doing my best. And all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I don't think people deserve it. That is how people say we are tired of people. And then I usually ask, are you going to the zoo? Are you going to deal with animals? Are you going to help animals? Are you going to mentor animals? Are you going to add value to animals? You are still going to add value to people, okay? So just snap out of it. Get to know the truths that we have talked about. Let those truths set you free. Set you free totally. Being misunderstood does not mean that you don't have value. It just means that the other person has impaired vision. They cannot see clearly. Okay, or oh, they ju they've just decided not to see the value. But that does not make you a person 
without value. There are other people that are going to see that value. And so many times, the people that actually misunderstand us most are the people that are closest to us, the people that are in our circles, the people, and yet the world, just like the Bible says that a prophet does not have honor in their own city. But my goodness, when they go out there, people are bowing. People are saying, you know what, God's visitation, you know, we have been visited. So they have open hearts and they receive wholeheartedly. And the ones that have block, blocked hearts, okay, and blocked pipes because they are the ones that are reading and scrutinizing into motives and stuff like that. Oh, they are showing off. Oh, now they've put on so that we can say what? Now they are staying in that house so that we can. Now they are speaking like that. Those are the people that never receive a blessing. They never receive a blessing. Never. Because even when a stranger comes, they will always seek to, to jeopardize or even misunderstand their motives. People that are going to be to try to misunderstand will forever try to misunderstand. And they're not only going to misunderstand you, they're going to try and misunderstand so many other people. Why? Because it's in their nature. Why? Because they are inferior. Because they lack the confidence. And when you lack the confidence and you're inferior, what you do seek to do is to pull other people down, thinking for you you are going up. Not knowing that you are going down. And the ones that you are pulling down, the moment they know this truth, and this truth set them free, they are on top of their game. They are climbing the ladder. They are getting better and better. And guess what? You are getting worse and worse. And you're getting jealousy. And you're getting a kasaja kumotima. And you get and for what reason? So I need you to be able to turn around. If you're the kind that was on the misunderstanding side all the time, you're the one that is misunderstanding other people. Take note. You're not going up. You are going down. You are sinking. But if you are being misunderstood, do not manage the people that are being misunder are misunderstanding you. Manage yourself while you're being misunderstood. Get clarity of what these things that we have talked about. You will breathe and you will continue providing value. You will continue holding people's hands. You will continue being, doing your best and putting your best foot forward. And let me tell you, you will be going from glory to glory because that is your portion. Okay, I love you and I pray over you that God will help you understand that we are in the world but we are not of the world. The world is going to misunderstand you. It's okay. That does not deem your shine and it does not deem your gift um, not valuable. Continue serving God. I pray that he will give you the resilience to bounce back, the resilience to continue going, to continue providing the value like the way you've been providing it and even much more than you have been providing it as you understand the principles and the truths that will set you free.